So welcome to our first asynchronous lesson. This is your first official, how do I do this kind of thing. So we're going to try to take it slow. Um, every problem is a little different with CPU because the way that presented, some problems require you to do different things. So this is problem 110 from our textbook. It says using, so this is what we did in class today, together when we were doing the Venn diagrams and moving everything around on Desmos. And we're going to do that here as well. I need you to host on your notes the link to your Desmos set. So as far as turning that in, that's a little bit tough. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and jump over to the Desmos activity right here. And so you'll see this link. Now what you're going to do is make sure you're signed into Desmos, which is very easy to do. Make sure you sign in with Google. Your name will be here instead of mine. Um, and then you're going to click on this button to share the graph. Up will pop a link. Okay, and you just want to copy that link and then um, put it in um, your notes. Just You can either write it down, what it says right here, or you can make me a live link in a, in a Google Doc. So it's a little bit different every time, So, but I want you to kind of think about what these two words mean. So I'm going to do a couple for you, but I'm not going to sort every single shape in, and you need to get every single shape in. Equilateral meaning all the sides are equal. Quadrilateral meaning having four sides. So, and remember we grab on the corner, the, the highlighted one, this, all the sides are the same, but it is not a quadrilateral because it has six sides. So it goes over here. This one does not have, is not equilateral. It is a triangle. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays on the edge. Okay. This one has four sides. So that makes it a quadrilateral, but only there's not, they're not all four equal. So it stays over here. Um, this one, it has four sides and it appears they're all equal. This is, appears to me to be a rhombus. I'm just kind of trying to look at it and see. Yep. They those all look equal. So I'm going to stick that one over here and so on. And so I'm going to leave you to it because I don't want to give them all away. So I've basically sorted one shape in each area. My triangle is out here outside of the Venn diagram because it doesn't belong inside the Venn diagram since it is neither equilateral nor, nor a quadrilateral. Um, but if it was an equilateral triangle, if all the sides of the triangle were the same, it would be over here in the equilateral section. So just kind of keep that in mind. Go ahead and sort this. Then again, when you're all done, you need to click on save first. It'll save it in your set of stuff. So like these are my graphs that I've saved. So we'll save it in your set of stuff. You can title it something else. You can add your name to it after you've saved it. Um, so that's kind of nice. That would help me a lot if you added your name. Um, and then click on share graph. So you share that with me when it's all finished. You either copy the link onto a Google Doc to share with me, or you, which I would prefer because then I can click on it and see it instead of typing it in, or you write it down on your notes. Same, same kind of idea. So remember what you should probably record on notes for this. Um, so I'm going to kind of do both, show you what to write down and what to do. But this one's a little bit weird. We're using Desmos. But we want to kind of remind ourselves of some definitions we just discovered. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, get my document camera set up. So I'm going to show you a little bit more than I normally would. I would just kind of say what to do. But this time we're going to make sure we all understand what's happening, what the requirements are, all that stuff. So I'm going to jump to the flex cam. And here I have my notes. Whenever you're taking notes on paper for me, the most important thing is that you write your name in pen. Your name goes at the top in pen, and it has to show up when you make a scan of that document to give to me. Um, and then I'm going to write down the words we just talked about. So it's problem 110, so I'm going to label the problem. I'm going to say on decimal so I know where it is. Okay. So that I know that I'm using the decimal C tool, I shouldn't really see much here. But then I'm also going to go, oh, I needed to define the words quadrilateral, which means has four, a polygon with four sides. And I also want to define the word equilateral. So, and that means all sides are the same. And we tend to use equilateral as a word for triangle. 
um, equilateral triangle is probably the most common use of this, but just a couple things about this word. I also have some pens here handy to do colors. Um, lateral, which is in both words, means side. Okay. And then equa, this part is what's saying that they're equal, right? And then quad in the first one, give it a different shape, that means four. So that's why we, if you can remember kind of the roots of each piece, you can remember what it means. Quad means four, so quad. Real, I mean, I don't know, quadlateral or four sides. Equal, lateral, equal sides. So that's kind of the important part of that word is that we kind of keep that in mind. So I'd write that down. Then I would write the length for decimals, whatever it might be for you, here. Or I would say, see Google Doc or whatever, wherever it is. So if I'm putting it on a Google Doc, I'm going to say, see the Google document. If I'm putting it, if I'm writing it down, I'm just going to write it down right here. Blah, 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 Desmos. Something, whatever it is, okay? So that's what's on your notes. So now let's go back to our situation here so that we've got that. We're all set. And we're jump back here. So that's what this is. Um, record your wrote, and you can... So since this is all in the ebook, there's another way to access everything I'm showing you here. I've taken quick pictures of it and thrown it up here, but it's all here. So if I want to go, I can also just be here instead of on the handout. I can be here and I can click, it says click on the corner and then it will open up this screen. Now this, that's not going to work. I haven't logged in in a while. So I don't want to cause it any trouble, but then I can click on it and then I can see everything and pull everything into place. I don't necessarily want to change the size like I just did. I wanted you to kind of see what was going on. So again, this one was already sorted. Those are the four I sorted for you. And then you have these left to sort yourself before you start to share it with me. Okay. So you might want to pause the video because I'm going to move on to the next problem, but there we are. Okay. So back we go to our next problem which we're going to do is this one describing a polygon. Now this one's really weird. Let me go to my um, screen here. How can you describe a square? So it says with your class. So if you can find a member of our class to work with outside of class, that would be ideal here. Um, I don't know where my pen is. Great. Okay. Um, that would be ideal here, but we'll see what we can do. Um, and I'm going to find my pen. I'll be right back. Okay. So we should be back live. I hope I am. Looks like it. Um, so I found my pen. It's very important. So here we are. This, this question is very different. How can you describe a square? So with your class or so since you don't, you're not with your class right now, but with another member of the class, if you can get them to collaborate with you, otherwise by yourself. Find a way to describe a square using its attributes or special qualities so that anyone can draw a square based on your description. Be as complete as possible. However, you may not use the word square in the description. So how would you describe the square? So your challenge here on this one, I'm going to let you kind of do this on your own and come up with that. We were going to do some practice with other polygons in a minute. Um, but how would you describe it? So I would probably use the word four at some point. We we'll talk about the sides and what's special about the sides in the square. And they would also make sure to make sure that it's very clear that I'm talking about a square. So four and sides, that can be, that can be anything, right? Four sides. So my challenge to you is just to write a description. You're going to put it on your notes. So you're going to go to your notes. You're going to write down 9, 11. And then you're going to write, mm, let's see, describe square. And make sure you write. I would say probably using three different descriptors to explain what you're talking about with your square. Um, like something about the sides, something about the angles, something about the fact that they're, and, and you know, what's special about the sides, the angles, and the fact that there are four sides and angles and kind of put that in here in my description then the challenges 
on a different piece of paper because I can't see the words that you've written describes where your challenge is to ask someone else in your house who's not in this class to draw what you are describing to them. So you are going to tell them your description that you wrote down word for word, whatever it is. Um, sorry, I'm just cleaning up. And ask them to draw it. Then take a picture and include it with your notes. So you're going to ask someone to draw what you're describing. So you're going to read your description to them and see what they come up with. And if they come up with yay, if they come up with something else, go ahead and revise your description so that they come up with a square. Right? To draw what you describe, and then you're going to take a picture or take that drawing and just put it here and then take a picture of it. So ask someone to draw what you describe, include the result. Now, square is one of the easiest ones to describe. We're all really familiar with squares. It's fairly easy to get someone to draw a square with a simple explanation. Do your very best. Make sure you're very, very clear. And you might not want to ask me because I'm going to be very, very harsh. Where somebody else might pick up what you mean without too much trouble. Okay, so there's our 111. So again, this is kind of weird. Again, it's a little bit funky. Starting on the next problem, we're going to start doing some work. So you need to grab the Polygon Graphic Organizer. I think this was really, really important. So the resource, again, is online. And if you're looking at your textbook, so it's in our Google Classroom, but if you're looking at your textbook online, um, it's, okay, um, I skipped this one. Okay, I did that on purpose. Um, you, it's right here, so you can click on this link and open it. It's this. And see how the link is really, really organized? I'm going to just, on my paper, organize it that way because I'm assuming you can't graph anything, you can't grab everything, etc. This is problem 113. So on my paper, I'm going to do my bet, I'm, and I'm switching pages. So I can keep it really you see my name again in pen. I'll show you in just a second. Um, I remember something else I need to put on. So while I'm thinking about it, let's go back to this. So I've just kind of restarted there. Um, I would also on the front page, we need to put one point. What well, that's more on? I'm sorry. One point one point two page one. And you don't need to write page one until you know you have two pages. And then on this page, we're going to write 1.1.2 continue page. And I'll write two because I know it's page two. And if I need a third page, I'll go back. And I might even afterwards come back to this because I still have room and do problem 114. So the 113 is going over here. I'm going to try to recreate. And this is, again, where graph paper is much more helpful. And I'm going to keep it. Um, pretty open. I'm not going to put the bottom on until I know that I'm done. So when I'm looking at, not that, when I'm looking at this, my first one was equilateral triangle. And the next one is isosceles triangle. Okay. So, and so I've, on my paper, I've just written those words down. I've made sure to spell everything correctly. I, I have a real trouble with the word isosceles. I've written this in pen. So these can't move. And just so you know, these pens right here are um, erasable. So I've used my non-erasable pen for that. Um, and you don't need erasable pens. I'm just letting you know. I use these because I can erase. Um, and so I'm going to start putting some attributes down here about each of these. So let's read the instructions and see what we're supposed to do. So obtain the graphic organizer. Again, you can recreate or print. It's up to you. Describe each polygon completely based on the descriptions you generated in problem 112. Now we didn't do problem 112, so we're going to work together to do this because I figured it was kind of redundant. Note the description for rectangle is provided as an example in the graphic organizer. So maybe we should scroll down and see that. Um, so let's go ahead and look at 
in our graphic organizer what rectangle looks like. So a quadrilateral with four right angles. Okay. That, by the way, that first sentence. This is my channel. Awesome, sweetie. <laughs> that is the description, the definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. And then they went on to say more stuff about it. Opposite sides are parallel and have the same length. And so they've marked in this picture, same length with the tick marks and parallel with the arrows. So tick marks and different. And so notice that these each have one and on the other side they have two because we're not, that's, this says this is parallel to that. If we put a single arrow over here, we'd be saying these two are parallel, that's ridiculous. Has reflection and 180 degree rotational symmetry. So we need to make sure in our description we talk about these kinds of things. What what's happening? You know, we got four right angles, and then what happens to it after that? Okay. So let's go back and work on these the equilateral triangle and the isosceles triangle. And I think we'll, well, that's all we'll do for triangles, and we'll jump down. I'm not going to do square because that's problem 11. Um, and then we'll do we'll probably do kite together. Um, and some of these regular shapes, some of these weird things as we go, we'll, we'll jump into a couple more. But we'll definitely do these first two and do them completely. Then we'll jump around. So I'll see what I can do. I'll give you at least the definition for everything. And then we'll um, see what comes from it from that. So and you can always find the definition, um, but that's where we'll start. OK, so going back to my instructions, which I want to find, they've already taken pictures of. On the diagram, for, so first we're going to describe completely, so we're going to write a bunch of sentences and um, and use our the description for rectangle as our example. On the diagram, then we're going to mark it up so that it's clear what we're saying. This right here, this diagram right here, is so that you can steal it. This is a, an isosceles. Hello, okay. I saw... And see, I have to check my spelling on my paper. That's isosceles. Um, I spelled isosceles wrong, didn't I? Yep. I spell it wrong a lot, so I know it's wrong. I just don't know how to fix it. It's really, really helpful. Um... I open word. I need to open word. Okay, this S right here. I saw sleaze. Um, and so this is an isosceles trapezoid. So you can steal this when you get to that one. Okay, so let's go mark angles that must have an equal measure, mark angles that must measure 90, read the instructions below. And so this is how to mark things to show that two sides have the same length, these tick marks on the sides. Use the same number of tick marks to mark every side with the same length. For example, in the diagram, AD and BC are the same length. To show that isosceles trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides, use one mark, this arrow mark on the parallel sides. To mark a second pair, you use double. If there was somehow a third pair, you would use triple. For example, on the diagram, AB and DC are parallel. Mark angles with equal measures by putting arcs with the same number of tick marks in every angle with the same measure. I don't do that. I tend to use multiple arc marks. So I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Notice that there are two pairs with equal measure and they have been marked with different tick marks. So they do this. I think the tick marks start to get ugly, um, but this can also get frustrating. So I do like um, a double angle mark. So I do it like that personally and then a single over here. Both are acceptable. I like this better. That's what I was taught. Um, it, to me, is cleaner than having tick marks everywhere. Um, mark any right angles by placing a small square in the corner. Is this, this graphic organizer is really critical, so it's important that we get it done correctly and carefully. So, like I said, I'm going to do um, equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle. We'll bounce around and I'll do a few for you and I'll give you definitions for everything. So, let's see what we got. Um, I'm here. We have our equilateral triangle and our isosceles triangle. Our pictures. Um, let's get the pictures on here. They were already drawn. If you can print this better, because it needs to be accurately drawn. But you know, we can get there. Let's see if we can get something. Again, we're using 
to my high school campus for the next few months. I can see that I'm really wanting to have some more. Okay, so these are the two I'm talking about. Equilateral triangle, I know from what we were just talking about, the equilateral means all the sides are the same length. So all three sides are the same length. That's our definition. A triangle with three congruent sides. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mark each side. I'm going to use color because that's always fun. It's red to mark each side with one tick mark. They're all the same. Now, what's really interesting about an equilateral triangle, since all the sides are the same, all the angles are also the same. And so I'm going to use a different color again. Color makes the world funner. So I'm going to mark each angle with a color. And I could then put a tick mark on it, but again, I just think it makes it look ugly. Um, the other thing I'm going to add to my definition here is that all angles are also equal. And that they equal 60 degrees. So they equal 60 degrees. So there, that's my equilateral triangle. I've got my three angles marked as equal. I've got my three sides marked as equal in my picture. They're all 60 degrees because the angles in a triangle always add up to 180. And so since they're all equal, 180 divided by three is 60, in case you didn't know why. So notice that I've made, this is why I did not finish off my box. I've made my sides a little longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down. I'm not gonna close it off till I know how long an isosceles triangle is gonna be. So the definition of an isosceles triangle is a triangle with two congruent sides. I'm going to use the simple triangle with two congruent sides, or two sides of equal measure, whichever makes more sense to your head. And so the two sides with, that are equal are these two. Okay, those two are equal. I should have been consistent about what I was marking, sorry. Um, but I can't erase it because then I'll erase the triangle. So I'll just leave it. Um, what's, it does not say exactly two. So it could be two or more. So technically an equilateral triangle can come over here. Okay. So that's important to be aware of that an equilateral triangle can jump to the isosceles triangle definition. It has two congruent sides. What else is cool about an isosceles triangle is what we call the base angles are also equal. So these angles down here are also equal. So the angles and these two congruent sides, congruent sides, and I'm gonna use symbols here, are called legs. Okay. And, um, And base angles, which are at the bottom of the legs, okay? So this angle is not necessarily, unless it's one of these. So that's our isosceles triangle. So they took about the same amount of space. So I'm gonna go ahead and close off the bottom of my box and then extend my graphic organizer and do the next two. Okay, so rather than going through this all with you very, this kind of long way, I will um, get up a final answer for you all at once. I'm gonna just kind of jump though to another, I don't want my elbow on that picture so much, um, jump to another set. So we're gonna leave the triangles alone. I'm gonna leave square alone. Rectangle's been done. I'm going to do, did I say rhombus and kite? So I'm going to put them next to each other, even though they wouldn't be next to each other in your organizer. So rhombus and kite. I'm going to underline my titles because when it's all handwriting, it's harder to tell. I'm going to try to draw my rhombus. best I can is not going to actually be a rhombus, 
because it's really hard to pull a ruler on this one. And then if I just click tight, I can make an actual cut. Alright, so back I am here. So I've, like I said, I underlined my words as I was going. Um, my, my rhombus is here, my kite is here. Um, I'm going to go with the definition. A rhombus is, is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. Okay, so I'm just, I'm using some symbols here that'll, that means congruent. Um, so far, triangle is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, just in case you don't know. So quadrilateral with four congruent sides. Um, and I'm going to mark up my picture. So sides of the figure are red. Now, I know opposite sides are congruent in this picture, but I also know for sure that these two are not the same length as those two as much as they might look like. They're really not. Okay, but we're when one to mark them, now they are. So there's that. What else is cool in a quadrilateral is in a rhombus is that opposite angles are congruent. So these two acute angles are congruent, and the two obtuse angles are also congruent. So again, this is how I do those marks without the tick marks. Okay, I just think all the tick marks makes it look messy really fast. So I need to write that down. And then opposite angles. Opposite congruent, opposite angles are congruent. And again, this is my symbol for angle. Okay, so opposite angles are congruent, and opposite sides are parallel. And that's my symbol for parallel. So anytime I'm using a symbol, I'm writing it out here so I remember what it means. Okay, so the sides are congruent, opposite angles are parallel. I need another color. And my drawing is too small. But we'll make it work. Just don't connect to your congruent marks. Okay, so opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so there's my rhombus. Now on to kite. Kite is different. Very different. Um, a kite is kind of two scaling triangles put together. Um, but whatever, we'll do what we can do. My pencils get involved. That was not much better, but hey, it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. We use this word adjacent. Adjacent means touching. So opposite means straight across from each other and adjacent means touching. So my adjacent sides are congruent. Okay. And here's the tricky thing. The angles right here, this angle and this angle are equal. Okay. But how to describe where those are located? I don't want to say opposite angles are congruent because these two aren't. So I can't say opposite. It has one pair, but they're very in a very special place. So I'm going to try my best to make that clear here. One pair of congruent angles and the angles are between the congruent angles are between the non-congruent sides. Does that sound really confusing? One pair of angles, congruent angles, which are between which are between the non-congruent sides. And that is a weird definition. So th that's why we want the picture. It's because sometimes 
the words are really confusing. So again, do as much of this as you can on your own. I will post the answers to the whole thing online, but I don't want to spend more time here on it right now. So let's go back to our, our flip chart and our next, that's not the flip chart, and our next problem. This is a really, again, a really, really important graphic organizer. You want to keep it forever, at least for the length of this class. Oh, that was it. Okay. That makes me feel better. Um, so I'm going to, in the next video, we're going to talk about some homework tips. Um, your homework is from both 111 and 112, and it is posted. Again, you're going to take this video. You're going to take notes. I'm going to get the rest of the graphic organizer up for you. So your notes is going to consist of your graphic organizer and whatever you've written down for problem one there ten maybe you want to redraw the i would probably here even though it's on desmos draw it but that's it's a lot of drawing so that's up to you and then the, and then what you did for problem 111 okay so that's what's on here um and again problem 112 is to help us build 13 but i'll put up what you need for that okay and so in the next video i will talk about how to do the homework